Travis Wayne gets on. This, I guess, is a Stanford Graham comment reply video. He had uh, three different comments on my video last night. That's a breakout video still today. Community of Christ, new president's hands over Kirtland Temple. Kirtland Temple was established in 1836 and it was used for Joseph Smith to have his visionary account in section 110. Vision in section 110. Unfortunately, now that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has possession of it, having bought it, the church service missionaries that will be assigned there are going to tell all the visitors that that's where the actual Jesus named Jehovah, the actual Moses, Elijah, and Elias, not Elishua, came to see Joseph Smith. They're going to lie to you because they're not smart when it comes to their Bible, let alone Book of Mormon, let alone Joseph Smith's works. Because Joseph was learning of the Jews, not the religion of Christianity, regardless of changing the nature and character of Constantine's Jesus. So we'll go to the oldest one first. He, uh, he first recognized, listening to my video, that uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 is fulfilled. <laughs> and in case you don't know about Jeremiah 23, we'll come back to section 112 because that's his next comment. He makes the connection from, of uh, Jeremiah 23 to Doctrine and Covenants 112. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors of my, that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and have driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit you the evil of your doings. Visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them. Hey, that's the keys of Moses. And will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase, assuming that they're all not wicked. There's still agency involved. The prophecies cannot take away agency, Mormons. If you're wicked, thinking that you're being righteous by committing wickedness to bring about Jesus and protect the church, you're still wicked, you're not going to fulfill the prophecies other than the one about utter destruction. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall no more fear nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. That's referring to Zion. So here we go. Verse 5. Behold, the days cometh, saith the Lord, that I will raise up. Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, a man like Moses, Messiah, Ben, David. A righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice on the earth in his days. This is why it's not Jesus let alone Constantine created them in 325 CE. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. Joseph Smith clarifies this, that Mormons have to listen to him. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. 
Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt? The Lord? But he was called Moses. That's why Moses is considered a Christ. The Christ. Of the law. Of the Torah. There's a reason. But the Lord liveth. The man like Moses. From Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. The keys of Moses that came to the Kirtland Temple to Joseph Smith through vision. I have to keep emphasizing that because Mormons are illiterate. It's sad. Very, very sad. And uh, do we need to cover the third one before we go to section 112? Goes to show if you can't find the cattle castle of Jesus in Babylon on time, <laughs> buy one in Jerusalem and soil it. And see, it's a miracle. Quite miraculously, that was the video I did this morning. Is that realization that Nelson was supposed to have the Salt Lake Temple all set, ready to go for conference, April conference. And he failed. And I mocked him, humiliated him, and then boom, they did the stunt. They're now using the Kirtland Temple. Quite miraculously, we have a lot of suggestions by the gift and power of God about how to create a distraction of a faith promoting experience. <laughs> Do you have any? This is. Uh, just, Yep, he sees the parallels. Do you have any money? You can have anything in this world with money. For money. <laughs> yep. Do Mormons sell their souls for money? Yep. They sure do. Yes, indeedly, dude. And so, yeah, I, uh, Stanford was a little concerned that there were some comments that he made that he couldn't find when he went back to look them up. There's a whole long lineup of comments. I, I am unable to do comment reply videos to keep up. And, uh, and so I try to prioritize the comments now and get to the more pressing ones that can be turned into videos like I'm doing here. And uh, just doing snapshots banning those who have the love of Christian Jesus in their hearts. It's the Jewish scriptures, guys. It means it's the Jewish Ten Commandments. And what is the number one law of the Ten Commandments? Love. Mormons can't do it. That's what happens when you have a false Christ. You follow Lucifer instead. And so, section 112 is to Thomas B. Marsh in 1837. And this is a year after the dedication of the Kirtland Temple. And so this is uh, talking to him about his duty and responsibility as the president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and the 70 that are under him. There's also the High Council, Standing High Council, with their 12, and, and then the 70 that are under them, under Joseph's administration set up. Different than Brigham Young's, for obvious reasons, because Brigham became the president of the 12 after the Danites chased out Thomas B. Marsh and framed him, saying that Joseph excommunicated him for standing up to the honor of his wife and blah, blah, blah. No, Danites, join us or die. So he left. He was chased out. 
and uh, wanted nothing to do with it. And then, Deuteronomy 19 for false accusers, boom, Brigham Young then victimized the victim by sending Thomas B. Marsh a, uh, a disciplinary council before Brigham, not the high council. Joseph Smith was in Liberty Jail. And guess what date it was? Da, 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 da. And so, yes, that's coming up, maybe, hopefully. Did you do your homework? I gave you a homework assignment last night. That's the one for 1988. There it is. Boom. There is that Jewish law from Deuteronomy 19 fulfilled for the evil of Brigham Young. So, and we'll cover the prophecy of Joseph Smith here. We'll just cut it short. And so he quotes from the Book of Mormon. 2 Nephi chapter 3 verse 5 Gro uh, Darkness covers the earth, gross darkness the minds of the people, and all flesh shall become corrupt before my face. But behold, vengeance cometh speedily upon the inhabitants of the earth, a day of wrath, a day of burning, a day that shall burn as an oven, Malachi, ringing any bells, a day of desolation, abomination of desolation, of weeping, of mourning, of lamentation, as a whirlwind it shall come upon the face of the earth, saith the Lord. And here's the prophecy fulfillment. Prophecy that's been fulfilled with this Kirtland transfer. And upon my house, the Kirtland temple, shall it begin. Yesterday was also Super Tuesday. <laughs> if you're not paying attention, there are just too many blinded Mormons who are also blinded Trumpists. As the nation is blinded to Trump through evangelicalism. Trump is their king to establish Jesus' kingdom because Jesus isn't real. He works through people. And he's working through Trump to destroy America. We all know this is what's going to happen. He's already threatened us. There's going to be mass executions. You will be financially destroyed. What? You thought he was going to support you? The devil never supports his own. Huh. Dumbasses all. And so, yes, I, even a, a presidential historian says, I'm seeing a repeat of the 1860 presidential election. First among those, uh, those among you, Mormons, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name, but have not known me. Yeah, Jesus, huh? And have blasphemed against me in the midst of the Kirtland Temple, which spread to the other temples of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, saith the Lord. There it is, the Kirtland Temple Prophecy. And so, yeah, the community of Christ has given it up, 2 Nephi chapter 3, verse 5 says that the community of Christ is not going to be the line of the Mormon Messiah. Joseph Smith III, no. It's a branch off. 
which means a brother of Joseph Smith Jr., Hiram Smith. That's why Hiram's wife and son, Joseph Fielding Smith Sr., came with Brigham Young through Hebrews Kimball because of the prophecies of Joseph Smith for the latter days. Because Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball infiltrated the secret combination into Joseph Smith and destroyed it. And so Deuteronomy 19, within Brigham's church, will come the Messiah as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will be destroyed. I have no idea how though. <laughs> They'd have to do it. Or the Mormons would rise up in a rebellion saying, oh hell no, we're not practicing polygamy. There are still a large number of Mormons who refuse to practice polygamy. And they're still staying in the church, even though they know that the millennium will be when polygamy will be brought back. And yet they're in denial that the church will do it. And we're on the doorstep. And Nelson is knock, knock, knocking. He's already ordered you to obey. Law of chastity was changed in 2019. And you're still Mormon and you're being disobedient and you think that Nelson's not gonna punish you. He's already sent you the death threats. He did the one and then he repeated it. That's another one of my breakout videos. He's gonna get you. Pretty much done. I mean, yeah, I can go through all of the scriptures and take hours and days and years. Oh, wait, I've already done that. But I get so many new people that, you know, they just rush to get the quick, easy answers, thinking they're confused and therefore I'm wrong. And, and refuse to do the work and research themselves from what I'm giving you. So do your homework assignment. Deuteronomy 19. It's right near the end. Come on. Do I have to do everything for you? Oh, God. I'm starting in verse 16. If a false witness... <clears throat> Young, rise up against any man, Thomas B. Marsh, to testify against him that which is wrong. Apostasy, leaving the church. He was threatened with his life and the life of his family. Join the Danites or die. Then both these men, between whom the controversy is, shall stand before the Lord. And then, in case of something on earth, before the priests and the judges, which are in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, and this is the Lord making diligent inquisition. He already had it set up, as you can see here. <clears throat> if the witness, Brigham Young, be a false witness, yep, and hath testified falsely against his brother, Thomas B. Marsh, yep, because notice Brigham Young replaced him, exalted himself while Joseph was absent, then ye shall do unto Brigham what Brigham had thought to have done to Thomas B. Marsh. Similar to the beam of the moon. This is where it comes from. So that you put away the evil from you. Okay. 
everybody else instead of focuses on eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for a hand, foot for a foot. You're missing the point. This is for false accusers. And so thus, on the 17th of March, 1988, the Mormon Christ has his sign in the heavens on his birthday to become a Melchizedek priesthood elder. And then the next year would go on his mission with another sign in the heavens. So there's a little more teasing since you didn't do your homework. <laughs> 